Photoshop's brand new feature, the generative AI fill, is crazy and super overpowered. There's so much we can do with this. So today I'm going to show you how you can actually get started and how it works. Now we can use this to manipulate images or completely create a brand new image. We're going to start today with a totally blank canvas and we're going to start from the ground up. And I'm just going to show you a few different examples of how we can actually apply this. This is really great for image manipulation, image creation, and I've been using this in all of my workflow recently, particularly in all of my YouTube thumbnails. Next up, we want to go to window and you want to enable this contextual taskbar. The reason why we enable this is because it brings up this bar at the bottom, which is going to allow us to access all the new features. Now I'm going to briefly brush over a few other features, such as select subject and remove background, which have been added, but we're mainly going to focus on the generative fill because there's some really nice new features which have been added. So to start off, let's just say we want to create an image and we want it to be in a sunny beach. So I'm going to grab this tool up here, which is the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just going to drag it from corner to corner and select the whole canvas. And now we've selected it and we're just in this normal empty transparent layer here. I'm going to press generative fill and this is where we type in a prompt. So just like if we were using chat GPT or if we were entering a prompt into something like mid journey, Photoshop requires a prompt to be able to actually understand what you want it to do. So I'm going to type in tropical beach, Caribbean, paradise, something like that and just press enter. Now I'm going to show you the first time how long it takes to generate and then I'm going to speed up the process so you can kind of move through the video a bit quicker. But for the first time, I want you to see how long it takes to generate. So now it's taken all of that information we typed in, in the prompt and it's going to create a background, which actually looks quite beautiful. And it took just a few seconds. It didn't take that long and it looks extremely realistic, but I can guarantee you that this is an entirely unique photo. What do we want to do if we don't particularly like this? Well, there's some arrows here and we can click through them and we can cycle through a few different images. Now, I quite like the second one. And if you go on the right, you can also do the same because it shows you the prompt over here, just like it does on the left. And it also shows you the three variations we can cycle through. Now, I can also press generate again on the right or just on the contextual taskbar. And we can generate it again from the same prompt and it'll give us three more variants. So if I don't like the first three, then we can actually regenerate it and pick from another collection. And then the arrows, we now have six. So we have two generations of three and we can cycle through these different ones. So I quite particularly like this one, so I'm going to leave it. And then what we could do is we could select an area of the canvas. Let's just say that I want there to be like a boat in the distance. So I can select this area over here, generative fill, and I can just type in Navy ship on the horizon and press enter. And now we're just going to build up a random tropical paradise image with completely generated objects. Just to show you how incredible this actually is. We're going to create like a beach setting. So now it's generated kind of like a ship on the horizon. Now I typed in on the horizon, so it's going to give it kind of like a shadow which looks kind of cool but the ship still looks closer than it actually is simulating it to be so i'm just gonna take away on the horizon and regenerate it just as navy ship because it's not so far out that it needs this shadow so it doesn't really look particularly realistic so we're going to modify the prompt to regenerate and now you can see this just looks a little bit better you might need to like play with these a little bit you might also need to play around with the size of your selection because this is obviously all relative to the selection box you select to generate it in and also the prompt itself to make it realistic so i'm just going to regenerate this a few times so i'm going to delete that layer and then i'm going to make a smaller selection over here and then generate it again this is because then it's much further out on the horizon so then we can give it that shadow and it kind of looks realistic okay there we go so I quite like the look of that, so I'm going to leave it. It's like a subtle background feature. Then I want there to be some life on this beach. So I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool now to select an area of the sand over here. Just like this, it's not going to be too clean of a selection. And then I'm just going to type in beach towels on the sand. So we're just building the scene right now. I don't really have a plan for the scene. I just want you to see how powerful this is and how it all works. And now it's going to generate a bunch of beach towels on the beach and we can cycle through them. Now, I don't particularly like how these look. These ones don't actually look that realistic, if I'm honest. So I'm just going to keep regenerating these. Now, what's interesting is how this actually works. So you can see how Photoshop's actually doing this, okay? It's using all of its tool set and all of its knowledge, just as if it was a real graphic designer. And the way it's manipulating this scene is it's actually creating brand new layers in the bottom right. And these are called generative layers. And you can see we have the cutout over here, and then we have the generated image over here. So it's interesting how this is working. And this works in a layer-based fashion, obviously. So if we would generate something on this layer, then it would generate it on top of that image. So as you can see here, if I press hide, 
we can actually obviously hide a generated object but if we move the generated object you can see it does actually use part of the previous layer to actually blend it in so it's actually using some of this sand layer to actually generate this image so if i move it it's not going to be transparent i can't move it to a different portion of the image and it still looks realistic it's actually generated in place so i'm going to leave these towels here they don't look too realistic but they look better than before and then i'm going to select this over here and then i'm going to type in lifeguard tower and we're just going to build up a nice little beach scene, just as if we were on like a vacation in a tropical paradise. And I have to admit that actually looks quite nice. Let's cycle through a few different ones. Let's see if they look any better. Okay, I quite like that first one. I'm going to leave that. Very colorful. And then we're going to generate something below it. I'm going to type in deck chairs with umbrella. Okay, that looks pretty cool. And then I'm going to generate some people swimming in the ocean. And now you can see we have some people walking in the ocean. It's actually put some people in. Like I said, you've got to play around with like the size of people to actually match them up to our other objects. So you have to be quite careful. You kind of need to understand perspective. That kind of looks the most realistic in our scene. We could also put like a little rubber dinghy on the shore. Oh, it's actually generated a jet ski there on the first one. That's pretty interesting. We'll put a dinghy there. And then we could actually generate some people on jet skis here, actually. And let's just see what it does. So we're now populating the image and we started this from a blank canvas, okay? Which is really interesting. After this, I'm gonna show you how to manipulate a pre-existing image. So you can see people in the background, like on a jet ski or on a speedboat. This looks pretty cool. And then in this corner, there's like a lot of blank space. I don't really know what to do with. So I'm just gonna generate, I'm gonna put people sunbathing. And now you have people sunbathing from this perspective of the camera. We could cycle through it like that. We could just have like some woman sunbathing in the corner or these people here. And it's kind of from close to the camera's perspective which actually makes it look kind of better i think that one probably looks the best in terms of perspective and that's our finished image it doesn't look entirely beautiful because we didn't plan it but it's still an image from completely nothing next up we just have this random stock photo i found on google of some people having a night out so i'm going to show you how to modify a pre-existing picture so we're just going to do some random things with this so let's just say we want to remove someone's beard. Let's actually try this out. So we'd use a polygon lasso tool and we use it over just the part where the beard actually is. If you use it over the face, it will actually modify the person's face a little bit too much. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to type in remove beard over here. I'm going to see what Photoshop will do with that. And as you can see, it's kind of struggled to remove the beard. It's just generated different variants of the beard, which is interesting. But we could give the guy a much thicker beard at least. Let's see how Photoshop does when we want to give someone a beard. So we're going to type in thick black beard over here i'm gonna see if we can give this guy a beard okay so we can actually give this guy a beard if we remove the layer that one actually looks kind of convincing we could also change someone's shirt so if we select below the neck so we're not modifying the face in any way and just select this shirt over here and the subject as much as possible we could just type in pink polo shirt or something like that and we could change the guys what they're actually wearing and now you can see it's actually changed the guy's pose which is pretty interesting but it's actually giving him a totally different shirt which actually looks quite convincing he doesn't look bad with a new beard and a shirt actually that actually suits him quite well we could also give this front guy shades so let's just say i wanted to give him sunglasses or something and I'll type in sunglasses aviators let's give this guy some smooth glasses okay those actually really suit him okay how about this guy? Let's give him some of those like Kanye shades. Pink Kanye party shades. Let's see if that works. Now remember, it's based on your selection too. So if you select too small of an area, then it's going to skew the image or make it a little bit weird. Let's just type in pink party shades. Okay, it's giving him like these alien eyes. Okay, I'm not going to lie, that's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely terrifying <laughs> we're gonna delete that let's give this guy a hat let's give him a farmer's hat okay i wouldn't say that's a farmer's hat but it suits him and then this guy's got an open mouth so we could actually just select this area and we could just type in party popper and we can see if we can give him a party popper okay that doesn't work as well as i thought it would <laughs> what about this guy let's give him like a really long beard long wizard beard you can see it actually wow that actually looks kind of good but he's giving him another thumb that just doesn't look very really good okay let's keep with that one let's give this guy purple shades okay i wouldn't quite call those purple but they still look good now what we're going to do is we're going to merge all these layers together and then now we can remove it and i can show you just the changes we made in the photo kind of subtle changes but they do actually really suit these guys they look like completely different people now what we can do is let's just merge these layers so we have a new image let's just uh i'm just going to copy this image duplicate the original layer and then merge the new layer with the duplicated one 
So now we have each as a whole image. And then let's press select subject. So we're going to see if it can actually select the subjects in this image because this is a complex image. So you can see it doesn't do it perfectly, but it does it fairly well. It still cuts off the ears, for an example. It depends how good quality the background is. But we could right click now and press layer via cut, for an example. And then if we just disable the original one, we now have the guys. They're not cut out very good, but if you used a better image, it would do it very well. And now we can go to the background and select the background layer. And I could just type in Sahara Desert. And let's just see if we can put them in the Sahara Desert and how that looks. <laughs> that would be pretty interesting. Okay. We can only see the sky right now, but you can see we've kind of put them in the Sahara Desert. Like I said, if you use a better quality picture, it's going to work much better, but it's still pretty funny, right? Now, what if we want to actually extend this picture? So I could go to image and then canvas size. I could just extend it. So the width, let's just say 2000. And then now it's going to put our image here. So let's just move it to the center, for an example, something like this. Now it's going to struggle because we have parts of the image which aren't filling the canvas. So I could select boxes in the the empty areas and then I could hold shift and select another box here so we've selected the areas which aren't filled go to generative fill and then don't type in a prompt at all and just press generate and let's just see if it can fill in the image for us and how well it can do that this is the main strength of generative fill if you have missing areas of an image and you want to make it larger or fill in different areas if you want to change them it's extremely lucrative and powerful and now you can see it's done a fairly decent job on the left side albeit not that great but the right side is just really struggled but we can obviously cycle through the variants this one's done better with a shirt for an example but it still does bad on the right side so we could also try that again and we could use more of the image and try and not select the faces otherwise it's going to mess up the faces and then we'll do a fill again okay like i said it depends on the quality of your image how photoshop's results going to be but some of them are really good okay but sometimes it does do some dodgy things like this okay let's use the original image and i'm actually going to put the original image to the complete right here because the image is a little bit weird at the right edge and there's also an arm here which is just facing the camera so it makes no sense to fill in that side and then we're going to select just this side this time and we're just going to generative fill it as you can see it gives a much better result it even adds in a person here who looks like they've got pie on the face which is extremely disturbing but it still looks better than last time you see it's done really well to fill in the guys but the rest of the scene that it fills in is just absolutely terrifying so you might need to regenerate this quite a few times but it's interesting like for an example filling in the guy's shirt and hand that looks really great but the rest of the image is just nor here nor there <laughs> to be honest this one looks good okay that one looks very good that's also extremely terrifying and traumatic that one's close this one's basically perfect apart from this like little bit here at the bottom this like it hasn't filled in properly boom so now we've extended the image and it's extended the background and it actually looks realistic and it's not messing anything up so this is the kind of result you want okay you might need to generate multiple times for photoshop to do it the right way but this is how you want it to look so that's been this guide on photoshop's brand new ai generative fill feature if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below and i'll try and get back to you as soon as possible and help you out all i ask is for you to like the video and subscribe and i'll catch you real soon